Welcome back, everybody. Another podcast episode, Dogbone Podcast episode. Um, not even sure what number we're on. We're cranking them out so many. Five. We're just we're animals. Uh, we're Ben. Ben is an animal. Uh, shooting turkeys every day, pretty much. Uh, his guide service is booming right now. Morgan shot one last night. Unpaid. Ben got one this morning. Oh, uh, we got a we got a visitor. Come on in. Come on in. Oh. We got an unhappy gardener out there. This is the, the beauty of, of uh, real life. But so we're gonna start in. Um, what'd she do? Oh, she wants to mow the lawn. I don't blame her a bit. After the big rains, we've really seen some growth here with 70 degree temperatures. You know, we're really shifting uh, seasons here, and it's. Uh, it's a really good thing. We're actually going to get our workshop in here in a couple of weeks. Um, you're all right. And uh, so what we, as it warms up here, it's an interesting time. We're shifting with Bella. We're going to talk about Bella in today's podcast. Um, Bella, we just got done recording and we're doing it live on Instagram. Um, we started a couple days ago. Um, we're, do, we're recording it live on Instagram because it, a new thing, I guess, it goes to our IGTV, which is nice for us because it stays forever. Uh, ben is actually recording it as well, just filming it like normal, um, which we will use to turn into one of our Bella Be Good series videos. The Bella Be Good series, if you are new to the Dog Bone Podcast, Bella Be Good series is um, one specific dog that we're training for a client. We've documented all of our training up to this point, or most of it, um, filmed, I don't know how many so far, 80 plus videos. Um, they're regular, they're, they're very casual, candid, unedited, raw. You see the good, the bad, the ugly. It's, it's how we typically do it here. So, and there's plenty of ugly. Um, but so part of that, hold conditioning is gonna be um, incorporated, but we're also keeping it separated on Instagram for social platform stand from a social platform standpoint. Um, it'll probably end up being a YouTube thing too, because we've got a lot of different videos that we've done hold conditioning on, and hold conditioning becomes one of the most commonly asked or commented or messaged thing we get here. Um, I'm looking at two questions today that I responded to this morning. One was at six in the morning. One, one was at 6.38, one was at 6.48, one was at 10.07. So I did three in a row, and these were via email, and all three of them were related to hold conditioning. And so one of the things that um, we are doing, we just started with Bella, is hold conditioning. She's a little over a year now, and one of the things about her, let me just, let's just start right here. So the question was, um, just recently got myself a black lab, English and American mix. I was curious how early you start hold conditioning. My pup's eight weeks old and already retrieving and sitting and staying. Should I push a little faster since he's picking up everything so fast? Thanks again. Now, that's a, there's a few things there that we'll talk about, but one of them is the hold. So my answer to him was, to be honest, I used to tell people, you know, you don't, we don't do hold conditioning until after they're done teething. And that's true. I don't formally hold condition them until they you guys go lay down. Now we got dogs wandering in and petting up on Ben. I don't start hold conditioning until after they're done teething. Um, that's formal. But what I used to not push enough and didn't realize that it was literally interpreted that, oh, well then I don't have to worry about it until they're six, seven, eight months old. And it just because they get done teething, that doesn't mean like, oh, okay, now there's a switch that we have to all of a sudden do whole conditioning. Whole conditioning for me is dictated by behavior, dictated by some of the trends that we're seeing with the dog. So when as issues come up, that can dictate. Bella's being, Bella's whole conditioning has been dictated by her my inability to stand anymore a little bit of a bad habit that she has. It's not terrible, but it's bad enough that I'm just done with it. We're done with her coming in so hard and hot that she has to fly by me and run around and then come back to me. Now she comes back right away and she circles around quickly, relatively quickly, 99% of the time. There is that 1% of the time where she gets out a little bit, gets a little excited. Uh, I gotta get on her a little bit to get to me. I don't wanna do it anymore at all. I want her to come in A, under control, and B, right in front of me. 
So I want it to become more efficient, uh, the delivery. I never have an issue with her dropping short. I never have an issue with her running off. Those are other symptoms that can be corrected by this process. I don't have issues with her blinking. She doesn't run out to dummies and not pick them up. She doesn't run out to dummies, pick them up, and then drop them and go off to do something else. So those are all, there's lots of different symptoms that hold conditioning will help you with. But the reality is, when do you start? I, so I had to mention this guy, I start from day one. I think you should start keeping in mind the idea of this is coming when you start making your first retrieves. And that's encouraging proper delivery. It's encouraging and setting up so that they don't have the opportunity to do the other things. They don't have the opportunity to run away. They don't have the opportunity to run big laps around you. They don't have the opportunity. We don't set them up with games like tug of war where all of a sudden it's keep away. And it's a lot more fun to have dad chase me with something in my, we don't chase a dog with something in their mouth. We don't play tug of war and then try to catch them. So if we don't, if we avoid all these issues early, it creates a much easier transition and process once we get into it. That's what we're doing with Bella right now and she's a little over a year. So for this guy, the answer is you start now. Now the rest of his question I will touch on because I think it's important. Um, and you see it occasionally, not as often, but you know, I'll reread it. Uh, my pup is eight weeks already retrieving, sitting and staying. I don't want to burst this guy's bubble, but no, it's not. It might have done it a little. It might have done it well for a week, but it's not doing it, and it's not time to move faster, and it's not time to accelerate. And so my answer back to him was, absolutely, do not push any faster, regardless of this pup's, you know, LeBron James type esque. Like that's why I always tell people is unless you have LeBron James, and there are very few of them. Like look at the look at professional basketball. There's one of them in the world. You know, there's there's Kobe was one that. You know, at, at that age, high school, literally high school, was physically and mentally and, and capable of, of playing at a very, very much accelerated level. It's very few, if ever. So let's just say it never happens. You don't have LeBron. So do not push anything faster. You can't speed up dog training is what I told him. And I don't, the best trainer and the best dog together can't speed up dog training. It, it, there's, you, it, it's impossible. They have we, the, now. They'll have some nice runs. They'll have some nice stretches. Bella has had some really nice stretches where she just light bulbs turned on really quickly and things started to click. And it was a combination of what we were doing combined with her maturity at the right time and all these stars aligned and man, we progressed really well. And then all of a sudden we started to trip up a little bit for whatever reason. And there could have been lots of them. Most of the time it was could be connected or related back to me. But there was, we, we have nice little stretches. And I think when you have those little spurts, take advantage of them. It's like being hot. If you're a sports team and you're hot, go with it, man. If you're a goaltender and you're playing hockey and, and you're on fire and it's just nothing gets past you, you know, you're going to play. You're, you're not going to take a night off. Like you're hot, ride the streak. But it's going to come to an end. It always does. And so you recognize that and you go, okay, let's take a few days off. Uh, let's let the guy recharge mentally and physically. So with the dog, when you're hot, roll with it. When things start to become, when you roll too much, you usually get too much momentum and then the wheels come off. And when the wheels come off, just don't panic, don't freak out, don't try to push your way through it by accelerating more. Just recognize it, pump your brakes a little bit, slow down and start cruising back at normal speed or slower. Because I just think it's a lot of ebb and flow. There's a lot of fast momentum, ride it when you can, slow it down when you don't have to, so, or when you can't. So uh, I say you always speed up by slowing down. So if this is the end of this guy's question. Slowing down is always the way to speed up in the long run. So that was a, that was a whole conditioning question regarding time, when do you start? So we just talked about that a little bit. Uh, here's another one that came, and this one I can't really read it to you because, well, I can read you a little bit about it. Um, but so he, he had sent me a message. I asked him to film it and send it back to me. And we see he was having some struggles. Um, some of it was heel work, some of it was hold conditioning. So here's the message says, thanks for being willing to give me pointers on hold training. I took a video of heel work as well. Sorry, the audio isn't the best. I have two videos that 
of two runs of hold training and one from healing. I couldn't get the healing one to load myself, but I did see the two videos they sent me of hold training. He said, like I said before, when we're doing hold training, I can tell she's not enjoying it. She'll get up on the table voluntarily, so it must not be that bad. So here's what I, what I saw. He's got a little GSP. And so he comes into his backyard. He's got a setup with like kind of like a, a spool, like an electrical wire spool. So it's like a tabletop. Um, and I've used those before. And the dog lo- gets up onto it. And then he's got a little thing that he tethers the dog off with. And it looks like it works good. It keeps the dog from ducking out. So the little dog came over and he encouraged the dog to jump up. And the dog did. Looked excited about it. Actually kind of jumped up on the table and sat there for a second. And then he put the leash on the dog and he started it on hold. And the video is, I think, a, a minute and 10 seconds. And so... He, this was a session that he said he filmed. So he got there, the dog went up, he put the lead on, he did his hold, he went on and off, on and off, in and out of the dummy with the dowel a couple times, and it happened in a minute and nine seconds, I think. And the dog 100% did not want to do it. Never once did it make eye contact. Now he did it a second time, so he did it another time, and then actually, after the first time he did it, as soon as he took the dummy out, he said, dead, the, 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 took the dowel out, and the dog ducked its head down. And he said it was chasing a, bur- a bug, but it just like ducked its head down and pinned its head to the ground, or to the table. So, second video, same thing. And, and n- never, not one time, did the dog, the second time that it was even worse was it was facing away from him to start, and never once, did the dog look at the guy? He literally, the dog intentionally looked away from him. He never, he held it beautifully, but he never lifted his head up. He wanted to put his head down on the ground and he wanted to put his eyes down to the ground and look at the guy's feet. And he would just, and if the guy moved to the left, the dog looked to the right. The dog looked to the right, the guy moved to the right, the dog looked to the left. It was just like, the dog wanted zero to do with it. And the guy's tone was very monotone. It was three words, hold, dead good and it was like probably not that much variance in his voice it was so i watched it again and that one was a minute too so in one minute these sessions were about one minute long they were in start go done done off and so I messaged him back and I said, man, you, I want you to watch those videos again. And let, you're right, first off, the dog is not having fun with this. And this shouldn't be not fun, this should be fun. There's no reason to turn this into a negative thing. Absolutely no reason to. So I said, I want you to watch the video. And I want you to let me know if you look like you're having a lot of fun. Because your dog is watching you. And if you think you're having a lot of fun there, I hate to see you when you're sad or bored or angry. Because if that is your expression of a good time, you'd be a depressing guy to hang around with. I, I, so I, I think, and I don't, I'm not saying it personal, and I'm not meaning it personally, but I do think the guy needs to look at it and go, man, no wonder the dog is bummed out. I'm bummed out doing it. Like it just, it's not a, it's not a real fun looking thing. So I think the whole, as a whole, it needs to be lightened up a bit with this dog. Now, GSPs are a little bit different too. GSPs are, I think, a little more independent from what the dogs that I've worked with. They are a little bit okay, more okay on their own, where I don't know that I get necessarily the, the, the warm, loving eyes that I get out of my Labradors. I, they'll look right into my soul. Um, P is a pretty, pretty good with just doing kind of their thing. Now, I also have seen some, and I've, I've just watched a workshop, inside the workshop series video that Ben posted, where we had a little uh, black dog. What was that dog's name? Shadow? Shadow, yeah. And that dog was super sweet. That was GSP. And that dog was just, well, look, that dog would give you its eyes. It would really connect with you. So I don't know that it's a breed thing. I don't think it's a breed thing. I think some dogs have a little bit more independent personalities. But I also think we foster that as the handler. I think if we allow them to be that way and just accept it and say, well, that's the way this dog is, well, they certainly mold and morph into that. So I, I think it's a combination of things. But what I did see was, I did see that the guy, I, I could see some passion in the guy that he loves, what he loves the idea of what he's doing. He just didn't, he didn't tell, he didn't share that. He's not, he didn't share that real warm to me or the dog through the video. So 
in that situation, the dog should have a little fun. And so today when we did Bella Be Good, and we did, it was day three of hold conditioning, one of the things I talked about was, I had to get, a, I, I, one of the indicators of success today was, see if her tail wags a little bit. We've talked about it the last two days. Ha, reading her body language is important. And, and it's for a couple of reasons. First off, when you, when you do your session and it's less than a minute, that's way too fast. There's no way the dog is settled in. So first off, the, the, the way that he might improve is just settling in. So with Bella, I, how long was Bella's session today? 30 minutes? Yeah. Well, so 30 minutes, and I think we did five or six session, repetitions with the dowel. And I would say not one session, was, not one repetition was more than 30 seconds. So if you take, if we did six of them, and they were, none of them were longer than 30 seconds, that comes to three minutes? So three minutes of 30 minutes was, now the, the last five minutes was a question from Instagram. So let's say three minutes of the 25 minute session was actually hold, holding something in her mouth. The rest of the time, I did a few things. I let her settle. I let her body language dictate to me of when to go and when not to go based on, she got distracted early on because there were some noises. Uh, she was uncomfortable when I first put her up there. I moved her around to get her comfortable. I wanted, I changed my tone a little bit. I got her tail to wag a little bit. I, I let her settle in and find her comfort zone of where she should be sitting to allow for pressure. I, I, you know, I, didn't, I could watch back on this video. I didn't really watch back on the video to see where the dog's pressure is. If the dog was putting pressure on the neck by itself, like if the dog's leaning and racing up against the, the lead and flat, you put them on like a not flat nylon collar. If they're leaning out and have that flat nylon collar on and they're bracing against it, I'm not gonna do a, I'm not gonna do a, less, a re repetition with them because they're having a hard time even being there. Like they don't even wanna be there if they're leaning up against that thing and pulling that lead tight. I always jiggle the, the little lead to make sure it's loose. If there, as long as there's play in it, then we'll go. Because then there's nothing that she's, there's no crutch for her. There's no way for her to be like escaping. This dog was escaping from the second it got on the table to the second it got off. Now, the part where he jumped up, that little GSP jumped up, yeah, because I think it was kind of fun. I think the dog enjoyed jumping up on the table. He just went, oh shit, now I'm up on the table and we're gonna do this. So I'd get the dog on and off a few times. And I'd let the dog understand that this is kind of a fun little game. And then maybe don't even do a session. So change the mindset of this idea of hard, hard work and uncomfortable and awkward. You know how hard it is to go to work if you hate what you're doing? Do you know how easy it is to go to work if you love what you do? It's, some people say it's not even work. Other people dread the idea and look forward to anything they can do to get out of going. Well, put yourself in the dog's position. Bella's got to be comfortable, and the reason is because if they're going to learn, in order for them to learn, absorb, and gain from a session, they have to first and foremost be in that state of mind. And if they're not, you're wasting your time. That's why rushing through a session just to get a session in does nothing for you, positive. It, the dog has to be in the state of mind, and then when the dog is done with it, it's putting them away and letting it soak in. If we went from the table with hold conditioning to a run in the outside or um, let the dog free run, I, God forbid you do that because I know people that have done that. But just even go for a controlled run, the, the, the effectiveness of the hold session itself would not be as great or wouldn't exist as it does if you do it and then put the dog away. Hold conditioning is the one thing that I, I do compartmentalize. I, I separate it from, I don't, I don't ramp up into it. I don't warm them up much. The warm up might be a little bit of heel work on top of the freezer just to move their feet around. And I do that for two reasons. A, it's kind of a warm up with them, but B, it's so that they don't become paralyzed and statue-like once we put the dummy in their mouth. I've seen that happen where the dog kind of gets, where he has a hard time moving. So let's move them ahead of time. And then today I moved her at the end too. I got I, I moved her on the freezer freely, back and forth, back and forth, not under control, but moved her back and forth, did some hold, moved her again, now we're done. Now she's laying down, she's wiped out. And you could tell as soon as she got done with that, um, and I put her in place, you could put her in the kennel or in place, either one, but it's gotta be under control. But one of the things that was real, 
um, a telltale sign too was when she got done with her session today, she stretched out real, real quick. She stretched while she walked from one freezer to the other. And I went, she's like mentally burnt out right now and physically feels taxed. So she's stretching out like, man, wow, that was a lot. Wow, got through that. It took 20 minutes and she did it five, She did it for a total of three minutes. But the rest of the time was, she had to stay up there, she had to be under control, she had to be thinking, she had to be ready. I didn't put the dummy, I didn't put the dowel in her mouth until she was ready. If she was looking away, I didn't put it in her, I needed eye contact. And then I didn't take it out until I got eye contact. And I didn't allow her to swing her head and be bothered by other things just because she had the dummy in her mouth. If she's looking away and she's got the dummy in her mouth, no good. She's gotta be having the dummy in her mouth, doing the action that we're asking, and understanding and focusing on us and understanding that's what she's supposed to do. That's where it all starts to click. Because otherwise, you can get dogs you can get dogs to hold on to stuff, but they're not paying attention to you. <clears throat> it's really easy for them to go, eh, sorry, I forgot about that part. You gotta make sure that they, you've got them from start to finish. And the eyes are really where it's where it, the telltale sign. So that's it. It's a Bella update. It's another hold conditioning one. Uh, it talks a little bit about some of the questions that we've gotten recently. And, and I love that we're getting questions on hold. I love that hold is probably one of our better performing YouTube video. We got that free hold conditioning video. It's an hour long. It's produced. It's, it's more formal. Then we're doing, now we're doing this Bella one. Ben and I are going to look up because we've got a couple other videos that we should post. There are other ones on our YouTube channel already. If you search out hold conditioning, I did it with Kimber. I did it with Ellie. They're sisters. I did those two together. I've done it with multiple dogs. Jet's on there. Um, old Dan I did old conditioning with. We've filmed some, um, Ben and I, and we're going we're gonna to dig those up out of the archives and post those too. But each dog is a little bit different first off. So the second thing is, is I'm excited about these become the most, probably the most commonly talked about topics and messages that we get. And the reason is, I think, because so many people are interested in doing it without force. And the reason so many people have done it with it and continue to do it is because they didn't realize you could do it another way. I've had, you know, many people have messaged and commented and said, I'm just so glad I saw this because I never realized there was a way to do it other. And I didn't like doing it the force fetch way. Now, I don't care if you force fetch your dog. You're, if you're dead set on force fetching the dog, I'm not here to convince you to do otherwise. I, could, I don't care. Do what works for you. But what, what I'm trying to do is help those that don't want to do it that way and are looking for a way to do it effectively and get results without putting that pressure on the dog and, and pain. I, I just don't get the idea of put, connecting physical pain to something they should love. It doesn't make sense to me. And it's certainly, this is, for me, it's a time for me to reconnect and bond with my dog, with, especially with Bella, because Bella and I, I talked about it today in our little Instagram thing, We've had a little bit of a riff, me and her. And so we're working through that. And this is one of the ways that I think we're going to get through it. Because by the time we're done with it, we should have a much, much tighter feel, trust, and connection. It's one of the benefits of doing whole conditioning the way we do it. There is no animosity whatsoever. There's no fear. There's no, there's no avoiding something in order to not be punished. You know, I it just... We just, we just don't do it that way. So, excited about this. Uh, check out our Instagram. It's in, it's on our feed. It shows up as a story. Or not a story, at IGTV. Mm -hmm. And then, ultimately, it's going to be a Bella Be Good series, so you're going to end up seeing it there as well. That's it for today. It's a quick one. It's a little bit of an update on Bella. Um, please continue to... Uh, share this and, and give us some reviews if you have a if you have the ability to do reviews um, we thank you for the support um, we're we, again we are in full-out COVID mode but I do see the light we all see the light at the end of the tunnel and so norm normalcy I do think there will be normalcy again people keep saying there will be no we're never gonna go back to the, the old ways maybe maybe not with some things but some things it's our choice whether we decide to or not and if you decide not to that's fine too I'm not gonna be critical of you but us we're gonna get back to normal and I think um, it's a it's a real reassuring feeling to believe that it goes back to faith uh, you know we talked about faith quite, quite a bit here recently um, it's been it's been a really uh, 
easy time for me to reflect and understand and realize the importance of my faith in a lot of different ways. Um, and I, I, I'm that much stronger for it right now than I was two or three months ago. So it's up to you. It's your choice. Um, you, you handle it how you want. And I, I'm not going to judge you one way or the other. But I'll tell you right now, I enjoy it a lot more uh, when I can see positive things. And so our hope is with these podcasts that we're providing a little bit of that. Um, pl- thank you for your support. Keep doing it. We're going to keep doing these. Uh, Ben's falling asleep on me right now. He was up turkey hunting a little bit too early the last few days. And he's dozing off. He needs another one of those energy drinks. What do you drink? What Kick are the starts. Kickstarts. Oh, he's just like a little kid in a candy store with those things. But All right. Thanks, guys. That's it.